clairvoyance literally mean clairvoyance is clear they call it clear seeing now to clarify most people don't realize when you see we oftentimes think we see with our eyes but in clairvoyance you're not seeing with your physical eyes that's the first thing that people miss you talk to most people yeah i'm looking at energy i don't see it because you're using the wrong camera the misconception in clairvoyance is they're using your physical eyes you're not clear audience or clear hearing People think you're hearing with your ears. You're not hearing with your ears. Clairsentience. Oh, I'm feeling it with my skin. I'm feeling it with my touch. Or I just have this thing. You're not. Your brain is interpreting that way, but that's not how it's done. That alone for a lot of people is already a big discovery. Oh, you mean my clairsentience is not based on how I feel? No, it's not. I'll give you a clue. It's what your aura touches. Now, what are the different clairvoyant states? Number one, seeing something with your eyes open. <laughs> Obviously, the second one, seeing with your eyes closed. Now, this is very, very important. If you remember, I said clairvoyance is not seeing with your physical eyes, because if it's just seeing with your physical eyes, how is it possible that many of us, when you close when you close our eyes, you see images? Then the dream state. Most of us, <laughs> when your body's sleeping, your eyes are closed. So the images that you see there are happening in what is called the astral world or the emotional world. And that data is stored in your astral body or emotional body. So when your body wakes up, your brain accesses the data from these different dimensions, depending on the training you had and the study you've done, will say, oh, I recall this, I recall that. And then from there, you say, what does that mean? Make sense? So the dream state, what you see in the dream state at that time, your clairvoyant faculty is active. Remote view. You know remote viewing? It's nothing more than your clairvoyance is now focused on another part of the world. Temporal or related time, past, present, and future. That's related to what I just covered a few minutes ago. So in the physical world, three-dimensional world, time moves at a certain pace depending on the mass that you're connected to. That's why Einstein didn't say space and time, he put it together, space-time, because they're connected. Now, in the dream world, or what you call the astral world, that different dimension, time moves differently. The secret is to wait for the information to come to you. So just imagine this kundalini substance located somewhere in the base of the spine. As it goes up your chakras, it makes your chakra more sensitive. As it reaches your brain and nervous system, as you're doing meditation and spiritual practice, whatever signal is coming in, even if it's very faint, the Kundalini magnifies it. So, the first one is the invisible light. If you go back to the previous session, I talked about it before. This is like all permeating energy in the universe. Uh, you can say it's prana, you can say it's the universal field, the key to this clairvoyance, clairaudience, and all the higher senses is the ability to sense it. Now, if you want to sense it, it's just like you want to see something, you have to have eyes. You want to hear something, you have to have ears. You know, you smell, you need to have nose and the other senses. So you need to have the receptors or the sensors. Now, <laughs> it's just kind of strange. You're talking about something invisible, and yet you need to have something that senses invisibility. That doesn't make sense. It's like, you just said it's invisible, and yet, how could you see it? Well, in, it's invisible if you have the wrong instrument. So rule number one, concept number one that most people make the mistake of, they think they see energy with their physical eyes. It's just like using a microphone to take a picture. Do you guess how ridiculous that is? <laughs> but most people don't know this. I want to see energy, they're going like this. So if you're seeing with your eyes, well, how is it possible that when you close your eyes, you see images. So we'll talk about the receptors and the sensors. Then there's, there's the imaging process. So if you have a camera, the camera has a, you know, the aperture, the lens, it has a shutter. And then when light comes in, it has to sit, you have to hit something in the back, like a film or like a, like a imaging plate. It's just like you have a retina in your eyes. So there has, a pro there has to be a process where your receptor senses this invisible light and it has to register somewhere. So your energy level directly affects your senses. Service is a big part of awakening your higher senses. That's why karma, it's a big part of it. As you're able to serve people more, you'll notice you become more sensitive. 
So in clairvoyance, there's two types. One is called higher clairvoyance. Now most people that easily see have what is called lower clairvoyance. So just imagine you have a camera on your forehead, you have a camera on your solar plexus. If a person has not been trained by an advanced teacher or has not been, uh, let's just say, trained or practiced in a previous lifetime, and they start seeing, most likely they're seeing out of the solar plexus. If you look at it, there's an eye on her forehead. I'll make it bigger. There's an eye in her forehead. There's an eye here. The eyes in the hands and there's eyes in the feet. So, what is the deeper meaning of this image? Clairsentience is sensing energy. There are many parts of it, we'll just give you some of them. One, your aura is the sensing organ. So when you're around people, you will notice you're, you're just going like this and suddenly you go this way and you notice somebody staring at you, right? Have you had that experience where you go, you could sense it, like somebody pressing on your, on your, on you, like almost somebody touching you, but they're not touching you, they're touching the energy body. So a part of what is called clairsentience is sensing what's happening in your aura. Mindfulness, simply using your sensitivity on the present moment on a certain item. So in clairvoyance, that's what you have to learn. It's like, okay, I want to sense this energy. I don't want to use will. It's a fine line. It's like, yeah, I want to sense or like, okay, all I'm going to do is putting my attention on, let's say this person's head area. Hmm. Then I'm just going to sense, okay, what do I sense? Yeah, there's a heaviness. There's, oh, it feels light. It feels good. You know, you're literally just waiting for the information to come in. That's mindfulness. What does chanting om do? It cleanses the aura and the chakras. It also raises your frequency. We did the meditation twin hearts, as we said, to increase your energy level. It also has a purifying effect. If we didn't do the med meditation twin hearts or any technique to purify your aura, when you get to the part of the stillness, which first of all, most people, that'd be very difficult. But when you get to that stillness, to maintain that stillness, to be able to see, the aura has to be clean. And this so-called unicorn light is not on a horse. You might notice a lot of your children like to play with unicorns. They like to, you know, hey, this is cute or whatever. What you don't realize, most likely your children are advanced souls. So it's not a horn, okay? Write this down, not a horn. It's basically brilliant light. Thank you.